we are going to do a Facebook Live to show some of the innovative and cost-saving work that's happening to reduce the, the cost of health care but expand access to health care in, in rural parts of our state. So with that, let's turn it over to Dr. Mann. Well, I, I'm actually honored to be okay, here. Please sit okay. down. <laughs> I'm honored to be here today and to actually represent a large group of people in Intermountain who have created a program which I'm extremely honored to be a part of. Uh, I've been practicing neonatologist for about 40 years. The first two thirds of that was in what we call regionalization, figuring out how we can develop these centers and have babies from all around the state come to these major centers where we can focus subspecialty care and improve outcomes. The last part of my career has been how can we keep babies closer to home? How can we raise the level of care at individual hospitals and individual physicians so that families can stay there and not travel to a distant city. And so in about 2013, when we started a program in Intermountain called Neonatal Telehealth, it was one of the early programs in the country. One of the first patients that we did was a baby who went from Cedar City, uh, Utah, which we're going to show you in just a minute, to St. George. A baby was born there and had respiratory distress and developed air around the lung, which could be potentially fatal. The physician there had never treated that disease before. So the telehealth was up, so he talked to a neonatologist in St. George, Dr. Carroll, who showed him how over telehealth to put a chest tube in, remove the air, and save the baby's life. Uh, since then, we have taken care of hundreds of babies. Last year in Intermountain, we had uh, 19 hospitals participating, 270 cameras, we did over two telehealth a days, uh, taking care of resuscitations of babies or consultations for respiratory uh, distress. Uh, of those, uh, we also, in addition to that, did what's called mock resuscitations. Our goal is to help the physicians and the nursing staffs in the hospitals function to the top of their scope of practice so that patients can stay there. And so, what I'd like to do is begin to uh, show you, and what I'm going to do is, since you don't want to see the back of me, I'm going to sit on a chair, and we're going to talk about how we would do a resuscitation. So when a baby is born there, or hopefully even before, if we anticipate there's going to be a problem, a call comes through, so we're present at the table. We have a large screen there so that they can see us at the table. We found out that a voice over the telephone is not the same as seeing a face that's at the table with you. Not only for the physician, the nurses, but for the parents who are in the room. They now know that there's a subspecialist in that room who is helping them take care of the baby. So right now, we're in Cedar City, Utah. Can you all hear me? All right. Uh, can you unwrap the baby and tell me what we're looking at? We have a 37 week baby just born, uh, the C section, we had a placental abruption, so we have dry and stimulated the baby, and we have no respiratory effort, so we have started PPV and our heart rate's in the 90s. All right, so let's go ahead and bag this baby, and someone give me breath sounds, and someone tell me what the chest rise is. That is good breath sounds bilateral. What pressure are you using? 28 over, um, 28 over, 25 over 8. 25 over 8? Okay. Well, if we got good breath sounds, has anyone placed the O2 sat monitor on the baby yet? Yes, it's on. Do we have any number yet? Um, we are low. It's setting in this, uh, not picking up right now. Okay. That probably means our perfusion is decreased. With the abruptio placenta, there's a good likelihood this baby is hypovolemic, and we're going to have to raise that blood pressure. So I need someone to prepare an IV with normal saline, 20 milliliters per kilo. And someone to look for a site. Increase the oxygen. What is your FiO2 right now? We're at 100%. All right, we probably need to increase the pressure a little bit. I need that IV started. I need someone to run the blood gas. I need to know what this pH was to see if we were severely acidotic at the time of birth. Dr. Manchin, would you like a UDC or an IV? Uh, I would prefer a UBC if you can do it. Okay, well, that's what we do. 
And by doing that, we were able last year to reduce the number of transports in Intermountain Hospitals last year by 84 babies who didn't need to move to a major center, uh, that they were able to stay at home. Not only that, the doctors out there can reduce or can, uh, can enroll other people to join them in rural America because they know that there is subspatially consultation that's rapidly available. It, it's uh, the wave of the future, if I can throw in a, a little uh, plea. A 